Can you hear me? Hello? Uh, did you slush? Yeah. This is my Ukrainian Jewish grandmother. Her name is Nelly, but to me, she's Babushka. Not to be confused with Babushka, it's Babushka people. Get it right. She and the rest of my immediate family immigrated to Baltimore from Ukraine in 1992, right before the Soviet Union fell apart and three years before I was born. My Babushka has seen some shit. She escaped the Nazis in World War II and learned to survive on next to nothing. She raised my mom at the height of the Cold War when they were forced to wait in line to be rationed a single chicken. She learned to cook the most amazing traditional food while maintaining a career as a freaking civil engineer. She's taught me to knit, sew, and is largely the reason why I'm in the kitchen today. Her story is nothing short of incredible. And to my surprise, it features cheese. Tvarog is a traditional Russian farmer's cheese that people swear by. I grew up watching my live-in babushka make tvarog week after week with no less than two giant containers in my fridge at one time. My parents would eat it every single morning for breakfast with honey and black currant jam. As a kid, I, I didn't really have any appreciation for this funky cottage cheese-like food, but as I've opened myself up to the world of cheese, I yearn for it. And I mean, what better way to pay homage to my Ukrainian Jewish roots than to make it? My grandmother has been making tvarog the same way her entire life, so I figured it'd be best to let her show me the ropes. Two parts organic whole milk, one part buttermilk, and one babushka. If you don't have a babushka, Ina says store-bought is just fine. Mix and leave covered in a warm place for 24 to 48 hours to sour. I use a sous vide because my apartment is freezing. You could also use an oven with only the light turned on. Once the curds have separated from the whey and hold their shape, place in a 400 degree oven for 30 minutes. Turn the heat off and let cool entirely. Drain the whey in cheesecloth, allow your boyfriend to make a dad joke. I was just gonna make that joke. And cover with a heavy jar filled with water. Leave until your tvarog has reached desired moisture content. An hour or two will suffice. And that's it. That's tvarog. This has been episode six of Cheese with, okay, wait. Why would you add buttermilk? Why can you just leave it out on the counter for two days? Why do I have to put it in the oven? Let's do a big ol' rewind. This is cheese making in its most simplest form, what villagers have been doing for generations on end with milk straight from the cow. So I guess to understand this, we need to first understand the composition of milk. Milk is composed of 87.4% water and 12.6% solids, including a combination of casein and whey protein, lactose, and fat. In order to make this cheese, we have to extract the solids from the milk in the form of curdled casein, lactose, and fat with the whey being left behind. Coagulating the casein is achieved by adding a curdling agent in the form of a rennet or an acid. Standard aged cheeses like your everyday Parmesan or Brie use rennet, whereas farmer's cheese such as cork, queso fresco, tvarog, and all the other farmer's cheeses around the world typically use something that's more readily available on hand, such as lemon juice, vinegar, or buttermilk. Okay, let's talk science for a sec. According to a Serious Seeds article on making fresh cheese, casein molecules actually have a slightly negative charge while being suspended in milk, which causes them to repel from each other. I quote, when you lower the pH of fresh milk and heat it to around 165 degrees Fahrenheit, the electric charge of the casein molecules reaches a tipping point. Instead of being repelled from each other, they run headlong into each other's arms and knit tight bonds. Most recipes I researched instruct you to heat the curds to an exact temperature before draining them. But in the olden times, they didn't have that. I mean, my parents don't even own a food thermometer. They've been making it in the oven this way their entire lives. By heating up the solids, we are both killing any bacteria in the cheese that may have deemed it inedible, as well as allowing the curds to become even better friends. By adding the buttermilk or fermented milk, we are both lowering the pH of the milk, as well as adding a source of super tangy, delicious flavor. And in the end, we get a fluffy, tangy, probiotic rich cheese that works in so many ways. Here's a few examples. Toast, tvarog, strawberries, honey, and freeze-dried mango. Toast, salami, tvarog, honey, chili flakes, the possibilities are endless. Listen, this cheese was so easy to make, and if you want to dabble in cheese making at all, I highly recommend you try making tvarog. Before I go, I have one thing I want to show you. How cute is my cheese, dude? Say hello.
Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been episode six of Cheese with Lee's. I hope that you were able to learn something from this. I sure did. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, follow Cheese with Lee's on Instagram, and do not forget to stay cheesy. Bye.